you know the story about this woman, right? So she's Felicia Sunmez. She uh, tried to get this guy fired because he tweeted out a joke that says, every girl is bi. You just have to figure out if it's polar or sexual. <laughs> so this guy retweets it. It's not the greatest joke. It's not the worst joke. But she's proving this joke to be true. So she goes on a tirade for five days on Twitter, ripping everybody in her company at the Washington Post and him trying to get several people fired. And I found this tweet. She tweeted this out in January 24th of 2021. She says, if a tweet truly crosses the line, it should lead to a discussion with editors, not a scramble to fire the writer due to fear. Dun, 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 dun. The person no most harmed in this case, obviously, is that person. But every time a news organization caves to an online harassment campaign, we're all less safe. Mm. Can you fucking believe that, Jackson? No, I can't believe you found that either. That's amazing. Wow, look at these wise words from Felicia Sumnes <laughs> from a year ago. They're literal. They're the literal polar opposite of her words today. It's like she's got two extreme poles. I wonder what that's called. <laughs> <laughs> so you do, this is the story. He got suspended. She didn't stop tweeting. She tweeted for five more days after that, trying to get other people fired. She's a psycho. She's a sociopath. It, it, it's like when... Um... It's like when the same person, Nina Yankovic, she said that a disinformation board under Donald Trump would be the worst thing in the world, and that would be a literal hell world. Yes. But under Biden, it's good. So when he so when he retweeted, when this guy, Mr. Porn Mustache, when he retweeted this tweet, she said, fantastic to work at a news outlet where retweets like this are allowed. Oh, that's right. So... All I can say is uh, that's sexist because even though she said the exact opposite a year earlier, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to call her bipolar like this joke says. I'm going to call her brave polar. <laughs> Felicia is brave polar. Here she is being braver. So this guy tried to stop her like she wouldn't stop. So this guy comes in. He also works at the Washington Post. He says, Felicia, we all mess up from time to time. Engaging in repeated and targeted public harassment of a colleague is neither a good look nor is particularly effective. It turns the language of inclusivity into clout chasing and bullying. I don't think this is appropriate. So that seems a reasonable thing to say. She went nuts. <laughs> she went bipolar. Brave polar. Bra she went brave polar. She, she, she's like, it's hard for me to understand why the Washington Post hasn't done anything what? to that guy. Uh-oh. Why haven't they done anything to this guy? So he says, and anything about in which one of its employees mischaracterizes his own actions and accuses a colleague of clout chasing and bullying for publicly objecting to sexism. Is this who we are? So she kept doing this for like five days. Here, here's someone else says, uh, please stop. That's another. She's a female writer at The Washington Post, mm -hmm. a, a senior female writer at The Washington Post. She tweets, please stop. <laughs> she won't stop. These tweets falsely accuse me of cloud chasing and bullying and cruelty and directing an eager mob to carry out a barrage of online abuse. And they're still, even after I appealed, he raised them to management and have noted that I've been receiving threats and abuse. You don't have to go on Twitter. It keeps going. So when that woman says, please stop, she doesn't. No. She then, she goes after that woman. No. She goes, please stop requesting that tweet from a colleague falsely accusing me of bullying and cloud chasing. They be taking down. Please stop that. She goes, do you have. Listen, this is my favorite. She goes, do you have any idea of the torrent of abuse I'm facing right now? And then she leads to, to mean tweets from rando people that, <laughs> that that were mean to her. It's the Taylor Lawrence effect. Uh that that but that that's not abuse. Do you have any idea of the torn of that's being 
Having mean tweets written about you or to you, that's not abuse. That's called a Tuesday on Twitter. And you're not a victim. You're a very powerful person who victimizes other people. You just victimized Dave Weigel and got him suspended. You tried to get him fired. You tried to get that other guy fired. You, uh, you actually got a guy fired and ruined his career, a guy she had sex with. They were both working for the same company. They go to have, they, they get drunk together. They have sex together. She wakes up and regrets her decision and then says that guy took advantage of her. And that guy got his ruined, his reputation ruined because of it, because of her, a maniac like this. And then she says, Im imagining a world where news organizations evenly enforce their social media policies rather than allowing certain reporters to feel entitled to tweet racist, sexist things without fear of repercussions, thus turning their colleagues into targets of online hate when they object. Wow. By the way, I think uh, she also might be lie polar. <laughs> uh, and then a bunch of people at the Washington Post had tweeted out how much they like working at the Washington Post because it's uh, uh, because they say it was collegial and everybody's professional because they were getting a black eye because if she wouldn't stop doing this, tweeting about how shitty their company is. So somebody said. When you send out suggested copy to all your digital volunteers and they all use the first suggested tweet. So these people were were saying nice things about the Washington Post after a memo came out from their editor saying nice things about the Washington Post. And they all kind of reworded what she had said in their own way. And they're making fun of it. This this tweet is. Why is that important that this person uh, pointed out? That they're all saying virtually the same thing that looks like it came from a memo from the editor. But it's nice things about the Washington Post. Why is that important? Because she retweeted it. It says Fel Felicia Sumnes retweeted this insulting e uh, tweet about all her colleagues. So this is insulting them. That's what this tweet is doing. It's insulting all these Washington Post writers. And this person, and then she retweeted it. She's on a, some kind of tirade to try to insult everybody at the Washington Post publicly. She's doing this all publicly. Reporter Felicia Sumnez is fired by the Washington Post. Wow. Wait, did they fire both of her? <laughs> they, didn't, they didn't even keep the reasonable polar? Both polars are gone? That's too bad. She should get two severance packages then. Don't you think? <laughs> this is what this is what the uh what the, they sent her an email, I guess. And this is from the email from the uh, from Human Resources over at the New York Times. She's been fired for misconduct that includes insubordination, maligning your coworkers online, and violating the post standards of workplace collegiality and inclusivity. The email from Wayne Connell, the post's chief human resources officer, also said Ms. Sumnez's public attempts to question the motives of your co journalists undermine the post's reputation. We cannot allow you to continue to work as a journalist representing the Washington Post. Bam. Bam. Uh, you know, it's funny. Uh, I read through all the other corporate, you know, garbage corporate media about this. And it's funny how none of them are standing with her like they all did with Amber Heard. Isn't that weird? Mm-hmm. I guess the Washington Post is the Johnny Depp of news outlets now. Am I right? Come on. <laughs> I'm kidding. Johnny Depp didn't actually deserve what a mentally ill woman did to him. But the Washington Post kind of does. So she she also sued the Washington Post. The same woman, the same Felicia. No way. She sued them for discrimination because when she said she was a victim of sexual assault, because she had sex with that guy when they were both drunk. Uh, and she said she was a hashtag me too. And she was public about it. They didn't let her cover 
any of the hashtag Me Too stories anymore for <laughs> fear of being called biased. The reporting would be called biased. So they gave her other assignments. She said that was discrimination and she sued them. And the judge tossed the case with prejudice. What does that mean, Jimmy? It means she can't ever bring it up again. That's how effed up it was that she tried to... There, the Washington Post, for once, is doing the ethical thing journalistically, and she tries to sue him over it. Uh, Sumner's lawyer says the reporter will appeal the decision. The judge ruled that the reporter failed to make a plausible claim that the Washington Post banned her from covering certain stories due to her status as a sexual assault victim or gender. Wow, she failed to make a plausible claim. Personally, I believe that hashtag all women's claims are plausible, so I'm guessing the court's, the court's probably misogynistic. <laughs> so that's the whole story. So there's so there's more to the story. There's another story about how she ruined this guy's wife, who was the uh, Washington Post correspondent for China, and she completely smeared him, got him fired. Re re he can't get a job. Wow. He can't get a job. It's a whole story about it, but I don't I don't have time to go into it. Could you imagine going to work in the morning and first you see first you see this woman uh, you were going to get your coffee, then you sit down and you're sitting next to Taylor Lawrence. Like what a what a place to work, the Washington Post. And of all the things to go after Dave Weigel for, also, I mean, this he was like one of the top cheerleaders for the Iraq war, war throughout his entire life. But you're gonna go after him for a stupid tweet he sent out. <laughs> yeah, he know. He retweeted. He'd even tweet. So there you go. I, I I hope there's more to this story. I hope it keeps going. I hope there's more meltdowns. This is the culture they've created. They fostered this cre this culture with Taylor Lorenz and this kind of shit, doing it all the time. And now they're the victim of their own Frankenstein. They've created a Frankenstein. They've created many Frankensteins at the Washington Post. It's everywhere. The whole, this whole culture is bowing down to the most easily offended nut job in the world. That's not how you can run a culture. You don't have to uh, set up your culture to accommodate the most easily offended person in every group. That's not how it works. And there's a backlash to this shit, and it started with Johnny Depp's hashtag Me Too ended with Joe Biden, and the backlash started with Johnny Depp because we saw what a crazy, crazy psychopath, what an unbelievable, narcissistic, psychopathic liar Amber Heard was. We got it, it was laid bare for anyone who wanted to see it, just like it is now with this nut, Felicia. And there's a backlash coming because people are sick and fucking tired of the culture handing the wheel over to maniacs with a vendetta. Here, we're doing stand-up comedy in Los Angeles on June 11th, and then we're going to Chicago, Sacramento, and San Diego on July 16th for the taping of my new special. Go to JimmyDoreComedy.com for a link for all tickets. See you there.